Hello everyone, it's Ashwin Rao. And as you can see, I have acquired a pair of engineer boots, a boot that no engineer actually wears. And it's probably a misnomer for a boot used by other members of the service industry for separate purposes than engineering. Regardless, it's a popular style that has captured the fascination of heritage boot enthusiasts. Um, I long ago tried a pair of Wesco Mr. Lou's, which immediately actually turned me off because while they were beautiful boots to look at, they were a whole lot of leather for one, and two, almost impossible to put on and take off to the point where I just didn't understand what the appeal was. So uh, I've done a little bit more research over the years, talked to some friends who are far more versed in the engineer game than I have ever been. And I decided to jump on a great deal on the used market for this pair of engineer boots from Bristleback Shoemakers. So this is their Keeper Mark II boot. So their second version of their Keeper boot, which is their engineer boot designed on the Kapak last, I believe it's Kapak or Kapak. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but that last is their engineer boot last. And they've been working and tweaking on their design over time. And when I found a deal on this model in a local Indonesian waxed flesh leather, I decided to jump on it. Before I purchased it, however, I talked to the previous owner who had only worn it a couple of times, but he told me that this particular pair was going to be easy to pull off because this leather is more flexible and forgiving than what my experience had been with the Mr. Lou's. And the last, I guess, the way that the shaft is designed allows one to not necessarily need a boot jack to lock their boot in and then take their shoes on and off. I just wanted to be able to slip this on. This is actually a shorter engineer. This is, I believe, an eight inch height boot. Um, some go as high as 11 inches. And I know that guys like Jake, almost vintage style and others have really felt like the 11 inch boot is the way to go. But I have been working my way up from shoes to service style boots, chuckas, those types of boots, four to five inch boots have gotten comfortable with six inch boots. So taking a jump to an eight inch boot was a big deal for me. So basically got these boots in almost like new condition and brush it out in areas where there is a rough out. So this is a wax flesh leather with a number of areas of rough out already exposed. I did use a little bit of wax to build back up the wax layers on the toe here, um, just to add a little bit of stiffness here, as well as along the buckle strap on the bottom here. Engineer boots have typically these two buckles, one along the ankle here and one along the collar of the shoe up top, which you can tighten or loosen. I found that even at the tightest uh, notch setting, this particular boot was easy to slip on and off. So I'm just going to leave it in this position because in this particular configuration, I can simply slip it on and slip it off. We can see here that there's a contrast outsole stitching that Benzine, should I say Bristleback, has used to create a 270 degree flat welt along the edge of this shoe. They use a doctor sole, half sole. You can see extremely well done stitching with this recessed channel created in the doctor sole to preserve the stitching. So when this sole continues to wear down, the stitching won't wear down with it because it is so recessed. Love that about these particular pairs. And I'm a big fan of doctor sole uh, half soles because they provide quite a bit of grip across a wide range of typical terrains. Now this is not necessarily a boot you're gonna wear into the country but I get the sense that engineering boots have largely been used for things like motorcycle riding, as well as just in the uh, hipster community. <laughs> I wanted something that was gonna be easy to wear, slip on and slip off. You can see this nice heel counter here with a double row of stitches adorning the edge of the counter, followed by a single row here. You can see this back heel design. A lot of different makers use different styles of stitching back here but no seam on the bottom, which I always like. I prefer no split seam here. Some of the makers use that split seam. Um, the shaft on this is fairly forgiving and loose. I believe that there's, depending on the model, different uh, circumferences and diameters to the shaft here, which makes it either easier or harder to put on depending on your preference. This is a neutral mid to dark brown. And when the, you know, when the rough out comes out, it lightens up a little bit, which plays well with this 
almost red brown or chestnut colored edge dressing. Other things I like about this particular engineer, the Keeper model, is that it has a unstructured toe and you can see how forgiving this leather is. It's actually a fairly thin leather. It's a little thicker along this portion of the vamp here, but feels fairly thin and forgiving. So it's going to break in nicely as I wear it more and the rough out areas will uh, accentuate over time. Bristleback has been regarded for a long time for their designs in Chelsea boots. They really do a great job on a lot of their laceless boots, including their side zip boot, which is gaining some popularity. Engineers have long been a stalwart. Now we're starting to see roper boots and cowboy boots and bristleback is really doing a fantastic job at creating designs, shoes, lasts that fit this particular style and aesthetic and just developing patterns that work well for a vast majority of people. Has a somewhat lower to mid in step once you get into this area here, lower at the toe profile here, which I think makes for a nice shape. It has this rounded, it's starting to get a little squared off here, but it's a basically a rounded, slightly asymmetric last. Uh, also a last that I see in a lot of engineer boots. Cowboy boots um, tend to have a little bit more dramatic uh, toe shapes, either a more squared off or a more pointy toe. The Bristleback Engineer boot is a worthy addition in this local Indonesian rough out. A little bit thinner, but I think a nice option for getting this boot on and off. It's going to quote unquote patina well as the wax wears off, but I can always reapply the wax to recreate its original look. And then eventually as the wax slowly delaminates from the shoe, you'll see these rough out areas come back. Bristleback, give these guys a look. Great engineer boots for those of you looking to enter the game. Indonesian maker. I, you all know how I feel about Indonesian boots. So give them a look. And thank you to the Stitch Down Discord member who sent these to me. Really great dude who gave me a fantastic deal on a really nice pair of engineers that I'm going to dive in and see if I like them enough to step up my game and go for higher levels of engineers. For those of you who are interested in engineer boots, Pay attention to Jake Almost Vintage Style. He can tell you all about the different characteristics of engineer boots and what makes one better than the other. I have a big fat zero knowledge there, so I might as well point you in his direction so you can learn more if you wish. Until then, I'm going to learn more by wearing these boots. Hope you're doing well, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.